name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So as I've been pre preparing our students here for Lent and for today, I've been asking over the last couple uh, weeks and, uh, and again yesterday, what happens today? What is this day? And almost uh, each time, uh, especially at the preschool age, uh, the answer is Valentine's Day. Um, uh, the energy around Valentine's Day uh, has superseded that of Ash Wednesday. Uh, so instead of swimming upstream, I figured I might spend some time thinking about uh, the parallels. Uh, and it's the first time that this has happened since 1945. And so people have reflected on what it is to have Ash Wednesday fall on Valentine's Day. You'd be surprised how many references to love or to our hearts are in the reading. In the reading from Joel, in the psalm that we'll read during the imposition of ashes, in the gospel. But what my mind went to is sacraments. In some ways, Valentine's Day is full of rich and meaningful sacraments. In some ways, it's full of kind of hollow sacraments. And there isn't always that much between them. I was talking uh, to the school children at the beginning of the year about what a sacrament is. And I brought in a little sneaker. Uh, it was a sneaker from when Elliot was first learning how to walk. It was uh, a, a worn gray, originally a black uh, Chuck Taylor uh, shoe. Uh, and I said, you know, to anybody else, this is a worthless, smelly shoe. But to me, it's a sacrament. It's an outward, invisible sign of the inward and spiritual grace of being uh, gifted, the ability to be a father of watching both of my children grow. And so when I see that shoe, uh, I see so much more than anybody else that walks by it. Because it's an outward and visible sign of a gift that God has given me, a gift that I am forever grateful for. It's a sacrament. You know, when you show up at the pharmacy and uh, you go and you see a, a Probably as soon as whatever the last holiday was done, uh, the large chocolate um, uh, a heart uh, full of chocolates uh, wrapped in plastic on December 26, I guess, uh, it doesn't feel much like a sacrament. Uh, and you see all of the signs hanging for Valentine's Day uh, well before your mind has ever uh, sort of gotten to it. Uh, and you feel like you're being bent towards, towards it. It doesn't have a whole lot of sacrament in it. But it could. Uh, when somebody uh, receives flowers at their office uh, and it's, you know, 50 roses and um, it's the biggest bouquet of flowers, the flower person is hardly able to get the door open to carry it in, uh, and the person who sent it wants everybody in that office to know that this person's spouse is the most loving, giving, uh, uh, wonderful human being in the world, uh, despite the fact that the person who received them uh, really likes lilies um, and really... Um, it can be hollow. But if those flowers represent all of those uh, emptying the dishwasher, taking out the recycling, going to the movie that she wants to see instead of the movie that you want to see, uh, carting the kids, uh, 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 you know, realizing after a long day that someone needs to be heard and listened to, if it has all of the, the care and nurture of years and years uh, of, of, of living together, it becomes more sacramental. If those flowers were sent from uh, a loved one uh, who's serving halfway around the world, uh, and it was some connection uh, to a love that has spanned the globe uh, that is received that day, those flowers are a lot more uh, than they were when they were in the ground. They're sacraments. They're living, breathing representations of a love that has been built over years and years. They're sacraments bring all this up because one of the things that we have to answer every Ash Wednesday is somebody reads that gospel, uh, they say if we read an entire gospel focused on God not wanting us to draw attention to our piety, uh, to our giving of alms, to our fasting, uh, uh, to our praying in public, why do we walk into church and get marked up uh, with a, a cross right on our forehead? Why? Well, 
The whole purpose is so that we can mark it off our list, walk out the door, and uh, so everybody that sees us knows we've been to church. Uh, it is sort of flat. It is sort of hollow. But if it reminds us of our very nature, now think about this. This glass of water is really what 60% of us, the majority of us, is made up of this, of water. If you looked at us closely enough, we really aren't that much different than the pews that we're sitting on, uh, molecules vibrating off each other. We are dust. We are dust that God breathed life into. We are dust that God's love filled up and made us the unique persons that we are. We focus so much on the other stuff than the fact that we are made out of love, that we are made out of God's love, God's spirit imbued in us, breathed into us, given us the capacity to be God's love in the world. So if that smudge on our forehead reminds us of that, then it's got meaning. It's a sacrament that points towards God and not towards ourselves. It gives us the capacity to realize that we are made out of love. And it's not just a passive love. It is a healing love. It is a redeeming love. It is a reconciling love. It is a transforming love. That We are made out of that substance. And when we truly release ourselves into that truth, when this truly burns into us, that sacramental truth, we can deal with days like today differently. can realize the fleeting nature of life, but also realize that our capacity as human beings, our capacity of instruments of God's love, being filled with God's love, can look at a world that at times seems hopeless, at times seems beyond redemption, and realize that there is a power, a truth, a substance to each one of us that is pure, redeeming, transforming, reconciling and healing love. As we walk this Lenten journey, as we walk towards that cross, that ultimate symbol of love, of the power of love, that we might walk in hope, that we might walk with the capacity to be transformed, to be moved towards people that can make a difference, that can rend our hearts and not just our words, that can be healers, can fix things. They can walk out of here a little differently. That not just our foreheads, but our lives might become sacraments. Sacraments of God's love out free in the world. Reconciling, restoring, renewing, transforming. Amen.